um, the group from Africa Archive, um, which is a community-led initiative, um, talking about the work that they're doing um, in Africa um, and looking forward to hearing from them. Um, so um, there we go. Perfect. So if you go to presentation mode, and oh, we this work. Yeah, we can share your, we can see your screen and um, your um, slides clearly. Okay, fantastic. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Um, I think uh, our first, uh, our opening speaker is going to be Johansson and then Omar, I'll be further down. I'm just driving the screen. So, uh, Obanda, if you wouldn't mind um, just uh, letting me know when I must advance. Same for Omar. Great. Thank you so much. I hope you can hear me. Yeah, we can hear you. Great. Jumbo, and good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. I'm glad to join together with you, the PW Loser 21. We've been waiting for this moment. My name is Johan Senobanda from Kenya, and I'm joined by my colleagues, Umar Ahmad, Luko Kelo, and uh, Nicholas Zima. Um, I help with managing our community at Africa Archive. And to introduce you to Africa Archive, our vision and mission includes fostering community among African researchers, facilitating collaborations between African and African researchers, and raising the profile of African research on the international stage. We are making African research visible globally, thereby increasing collaborations across the continent, as well as triggering interdisciplinary research. And this is achieved by partnering with established and renowned organizations inside and outside Africa that specialize in science communication, capacity building, scholarly tech development, and networking. All of these serve to enhance the discoverability of African research results and achievements, as well as the reputation building of African research profiles. And my colleague Umar will tell you about our repository partners in a few. Through, um, through the building of an, uh, of an open, transparent, reliable, interoperable, efficient, and decentralized discoverability infrastructure, it is our aim to support the connectivity of African scholars and African scholarship to a wider audience. And as part of our near future plans, we intend to further diversify tools and applications to work along innovative global applications um, that are that are, that are at a global standard and also uh, methodologies that are able to accomplish our mission to ensure ownership of African data and uh, therefore exploring and contributing to, to persistent identifiers in Africa is important to our mission. I will um, now welcome my colleague Umar and please note that our team will provide a link to a Google document through which you can comment and ask questions. You're welcome, Umar. Yeah, Hanson, just, um, I'm not sure. So Umar on the screen seems to be inactive in the browser. So uh, we can't add him to the screen. Um, it says the attendee is not live. So I'm not sure if there's connection issues. Um, oh, okay. So perhaps, I don't know if you could continue. Um, Nabil is trying to work in the background to get Umar onto the screen. Um, would it be possible for you to continue? Okay, great. So mm -hmm. I will um, go on to our submission process. So I will talk about it. in Africa archive. We have um, currently we are, we have six uh, partner repositories, including OSF, Figshare, um, Zenodo, Sense Open, Fig, uh, and, and and also Chaos. So the submission process varies from one repository to another, which normally includes uh, visiting the uh, specific repository, creating an account, and then you have a dashboard um, where you can upload your research and different ways that you can share it. And also different, uh, these different submission, these different repositories have different identifiers. So uh, your identifier will look differently uh, from one, um, repository to another. And as you can uh, look at the screen um, on OSF, for example, or Sense Open, 
um, Fixture, Pop Up, Zenodo and Chaos, uh, they all vary. And um, the submission process is different. And also the other publication processes are, are, are totally different. And, uh, th and, and that's uh, also creates a problem statement for why uh, persistent um, identifiers in Africa is important. And uh, I would welcome uh, any of my colleague, um, Luke or Niklas to tell us more about that. Thank you. Thanks so much, yeah. Um, I don't know if you can hear me now. I didn't mute or unmute. We can hear you. Oh, okay, thanks. Uh, sorry, it's unfamiliar. Um, I can only see the screen I'm sharing, nothing else. All right, so um, yeah, thank you, Abanda. So we've, we've, um, this is just shortening our presentation. I think um, one of our main aims really is to sort of say hello, um, this is us, and um, there are a lot of questions still, um, a lot of very sincere efforts to work with as many different um, players in the sort of openness environment. Um, as possible, and then to sort of leverage existing systems. So, um, one of the one of the issues that um, Obanda has just um, um, noted here, um, just looking at uh, the shape of the identifiers, you know, who who mints them, where are they stored, uh, where are they managed, etc., um, points to a very sort of obvious question around how we go about aggregating and or harvesting the metadata for all these publications that are sitting on all these and being submitted and managed on all these different partner repositories um, by leveraging either existing systems um, or in fact uh, developing new systems uh, while leaving the content in place. We don't want to build a new silo or build anything new really. Um, we just ideally like to, um, well, uh, fulfill the mission of Africa Archive was as outlaid um, in the beginning by Obanda. So, uh, one of the question is one of the questions is what what logical problems should we be focusing on first um, in this in this um, environment of persistent identification? Is it around creating, extracting, aggregating Africa related metadata tags? Is it around repurposing sustainable keywording and filtering systems that already exist? Is it around um, building or furthering open source software um, or adapting functionality that's already there? I've just sort of provocatively listed six. Um, you know, we've just literally just heard from Wikidata. Is that is that um, the avenue to pursue uh, or data site commons uh, or the more European focused open air skull explorer where there's a link um, exchange uh, functionality um, there is an effort uh, within the team. Um, uh, it's currently on GitHub. It's linked here um, uh, to build a hub and search portal. Uh, that's also just a mention for those who would like to get in touch with us, have a look at this, and uh, put it, uh, give their inputs and suggestions. Um, um, and also, I just wanted to not leave it un um, not mentioned. Uh, obviously, it's around capacity building and about network building, networks, strengthening existing networks around data stewardship uh, in and across Africa. Um, but one uh, one thing that's just come up uh, basically through all of this is that um, DOIs aren't really uh, minted in and for Africa uh, at a scale that would in any way sort of um, compare or compete with Europe and and the Americas, uh, northern North North America. Um, that's that's kind of my slide, um, and uh, I think uh, Luke, if, if if he's in the call, uh, would take us out uh, on the last couple of slides. So Luke, we should be able to hear you, and we have uh, managed to let me unmute. Uh, and Umar has also we've managed to get Umar onto screen as well. Um, so Luke, um, you can go ahead. Thank you. Um, thank you, Nicholas. Thank you, Obanda. Um, I'm just going to possibly check with my colleague, Dr. Uma, whether he wants to go uh, ahead of me. I'm not sure. I, I know he was having some connection trouble yeah. with you here now. Sure. So possibly I, I can let him go and then I'll, I'll do the winding up. Sure. Yeah. Thank you, Luke. Hello, everyone. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. I'm sorry, having some challenges. I actually joined a different channel, I think. 
Um, uh, basically, um, I wanted to actually um, walk through with you the uh, basic workflow that we do have uh, in African archive to allow African scientists and researchers to deposit their manuscripts and data sets. Um, for the time being, um, we are working toward building our own uh, African archive on repository uh, to be owned by the African science community and likely to be hosted in African uh, territory. And we currently, for the time being, uh, been using uh, Zenodo Open Science Frame, PowerPath, um, to serve as our repository partners for now, uh, so that uh, we can have increased global uh, discoverability and uh, visibility for African scientists and researchers alike. And we recently added uh, Fixture and Chaos uh, to broadly uh, provide African researchers uh, a flavor of having multiple platforms. Um, of their choice so they can submit their manuscripts and papers uh, that will increase their own um, uh, global discoverability and visibility across uh, uh, other global scientists and researchers alike. Next slide. Um, just to give you uh, an example, in principle, um, uh, each platforms do have uh, different uh, stages and workflow uh, for submitting the manuscripts, for example, uh, authors can actually submit their manuscripts um, in fixture through uh, these three different stages, which and also is required to log into the africanarchive.fixture.com and then uh, select the menu, and then sign off an account if you don't have one, uh, after which uh, you can have uh, a kind of uh, empty metadata spaces uh, of which it is required by uh, and also to fill in those spaces uh, for the metadata of the manuscripts of the particular types of manuscripts that you are interested in to submit. And then you can uh, hit publish and save it and then uh, wait for a curator or moderator to uh, uh, release it online. And if there is anything, he can get in touch with the author. The same goes to uh, the next, uh, which is Open Science Prime. Uh, often science prime work also uh, almost having the same principles with that of the fixture, just that they differ in terms of the assignments of their DOI. Uh, so you can see the stages also are, are basically the same. You go to the African Archive website and uh, click on the menu, and then you make submissions of the manuscripts that you are interested in to submit for the African Archive and African community. Uh, likewise, uh, we have uh, the next one, which is the Open science, uh, science open, also basically the same principles. Uh, you require to submit those metadata uh, depending on the types of uh, manuscripts or articles that you are submitting, and then uh, it will be assigned to DOI after it is released for moderated by the moderate, so in African archive. The same goes with, uh, with uh, the, the next one which is Zenodo, also uh, you need to create an account if you don't have one and uh, upload your files and manuscripts and profiles, the metadata that is requested, and then uh, wait for the authors, I uh, mean the um, moderator to, to get in touch with you if there is anything that requires your attention for corrections, or if there is not, uh, the moderator will release it online. So um, basically, these are the stages uh, for uh, African scientists and uh, researchers alike to submit their manuscripts in African archive while waiting for, to develop our own uh, African ones repository. Thank you so much. I'll now hands over to the loop. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Uma. Yeah. Uh, thank you as well to uh, Nicholas and, and to uh, Johansson for guiding us through uh, what we do uh, and, and who we are as the Africa Archives. And uh, again, allow me to express uh, pleasure to uh, Peter Palooza for uh, graciously hosting us and, and being interested in hearing about uh, how we are handling uh, this interesting issue of uh, manuscripts and their persistent identifiers. So I just want to take you through in the next probably few minutes about uh, an initiative 
that uh, we sort of started uh, somewhere towards uh, the middle of last year, 2020, 2020, the year of the pandemic. And this was uh, our creation of, uh, as you can see there on the screen, uh, a sort of open access portal that provided uh, COVID-19 information. Now, um, this is still in line with keeping with uh, our stated objectives. Uh, as uh, Obanda mentioned, trying to basically foster that whole cross-continental collaboration. Uh, for example, I myself based here in Nairobi, Kenya, and um, some of my other colleagues uh, based, uh, like uh, Nicholas based in South Africa, um, uh, Dr. Umar as well in different parts. So there's that whole idea that we're trying to capture of how do we get uh, that um, cross-continental research exchange of information in order to be able to disseminate uh, a lot of African data and research results. Uh, but we're doing this with the idea that we still want to maintain uh, our own independence, uh, as Nicholas mentioned, but also trying to create a, a very interoperable uh, digital archive. So as you can see, it's uh, quite um, an interesting challenge. So one of the ways we thought we'd approach this, especially uh, at the outbreak or the onset of the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic was to basically create a, a one-stop uh, sort of uh, portal that would uh, be able to guide our target audience, um, that is African researchers or Afri African citizens or any policy makers into a place where they could be able to get uh, quick answers um, concerning the probably first time encounter with this type of uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic. So if we could possibly move to the, to the next slide, <clears throat> I think we decided to adopt a technological uh, approach uh, to this. And um, this was basically to uh, set up uh, together with our German partners, uh, Dialogue Shift, uh, a multilingual uh, chatbot. So this was basically using um, natural language processing. And maybe it, it might sound uh, as if I've moved a bit away from uh, uh, the topic at hand of personal identifiers, but I, I do promise I'll, I'll come to that just now. So basically within our portal um, efforts, we uh, harnessed the power of artificial intelligence uh, just to try and create a sort of natural language processor that could be able to run on top of a, a Google Translate API, all open source, uh, all freely available on the internet, and basically translating over 100 languages, uh, including maybe Afrikaans or Kiswahili, or maybe uh, Hindi, certainly English. But you can understand why this was such a, an important step for us as Africa Archives because really we're talking about a continent in Africa where there are over 2,000 indigenous uh, local languages. And I think that's uh, excluding uh, English, which uh, all the 54 countries on the continent speak. But we felt this was still part of our goal to try and create that efficient and timely access to information that is being that we are receiving from African scientists, uh, both within the continent and outside or from those who are doing research uh, about Africa uh, and they are wishing to maybe um, intersect with us. So in this particular case, then the chatbot would allow ease of communication and provide at least answers to questions about um, manuscripts, their submissions, uh, and indeed if, uh, if it does come up, then the persistent identifier from ORCID through to uh, ROI. Uh, ROR, sorry. So I think uh, this was a, an important step for us as Africa Archives to try and get to the point where we could um, harness uh, different, maybe uh, unique users coming to submit their manuscripts or their post postscripts, uh, preprints or postscripts or completed manuscripts with us. And in this particular case, uh, ever since uh, the inception of, of the chatbot, um, it's almost coming to about a year now, roughly uh, 260 days or so. Uh, we have seen um, a considerable traffic. It has not hit the 500 user mark yet, 
but it, it should be on its way there, um, possibly. But uh, as of now, we're talking about at least uh, 200 or so uh, unique user queries concerning either COVID-19 information, uh, symptoms or infections and the like, or uh, queries concerning submission of working papers and preprints and that type of thing, uh, and the follow-up that's done obviously by uh, scientists who are interested in that, finding out about the accepted manuscripts. So I think this is a, of something that we just wished to share with uh, our um, Pidapalooza family at this particular point in time. And again, like I said, it's, it's, it's a slight uh, deviation, uh, possibly from the key topic, but we, we felt that it was connected and related. Um, and possibly for more on this, I, I should be able to share more on this uh, at a future date with you. We're, we're having a, a, an event, it's known as the Chatbot Africa and Conversational uh, Art Artificial Intelligence Summit. So this is basically a 100% virtual event that we will be having roughly about uh, slightly over a month from now, that is on the 4th and 5th of March um, this year. So um, we do welcome you to uh, join us and be able to find out about the sort of interesting work that we're doing uh, at the intersection of academia and the industry and trying to understand again uh, how we use these uh, unique uh, persistent identifiers to try and increase that uh, discoverability of our research uh, within the local African homeostasis. So I think uh, it's uh, my pleasure to bring um, this particular presentation to an end. Uh, possibly I'm going to uh, open up the floor for any questions or hand back to our able moderator. Yeah, thank you, thank you very much. Thanks very much, Luke. And um, we certainly do have time for questions and that's what we encourage at Pitapalooza is um, open conversation and, and time to discuss some of these important issues. Um, I also wanted to mention, feel free to post in the chat um, about the event. Um, I see there's some um, questions about it, so feel free to post a link in there. Um, while um, that's happening, um, there's, so I had an initial question just generally about Africa Archive and um, I think the work that you're doing is fantastic for you know the the dissemination and visibility and discoverability of um, African research. Um, I'm South African myself, and so um, it's really exciting um, the work that you're doing. Um, could you tell us a bit about the community behind Africa Archive and what are the key milestones that you want to address over 2021? Yeah, I think that one's for Abanda. Uh, let me just make sure. Sorry there, um, Abanda's unmuted. So just yeah. making sure. Okay. okay, great. So uh, the community behind Africa Archive, um, Africa Archive is, is led by um, a diverse community. We have, um, we have people from Africa, like I'm based in Kenya. We have uh, some from West Africa and Southern Africa. We have uh, others like um, uh, Umar in Malaysia right now and in Germany too. So this is a, this is a team working behind Africa Kai, yeah. And we um, and we we also are mobilizing or uh, managing a community within Africa and out of Africa of researchers, yeah. And through that community, we have over four hundred and fifty submissions to Africa Kai through our partner repositories, um, which are five at the moment, and we are working on uh, two to add, to add two more partner repositories. And we will also have uh, in um, 32 partners in total um, who are to help us with uh, capacity building and, uh, and other tech development, um, other important aspects of uh, sustaining our infrastructure at Africa Kai. And, um, and, and to contribute to um, our milestones is uh, that we, this year, especially relating also to persistent identifiers, we are looking at uh, interoperability of the digital scholarly infrastructure that we create. 
We are planning to build integrations with RCID data site, Crossref, and also seeking our, our core membership. And uh, we're also looking at expanding our open access digital infrastructure um, uh, beyond, the, beyond the five uh, that we mentioned. Um, we're, we're looking at working with uh, PK, PKP um, and uh, Chaos closely so we can have, uh, we can expand so that we can be able to expand our scholarly output and and also um in I would, I would also like to invite any other person from our team to add to our milestones in 2021 others would like to add anything um thanks very much Abanda. that's it's really nice to hear and also i just wanted to, to point out that um the presenters posted their roadmap in the chat which is really um nice to see and um, i think it's it's nice to sort of talk about these openly and some of these milestones because as a community we we're working towards the same same principles and same objectives and so collaboratively i think um um is working collaboratively is really important um one other question that um was posted was around submission of uh submissions in other languages other than english um i understood that the chatbot is available in other languages um, but this was specifically around submissions so i'm not sure who would like to answer that I think I'm personally a bit too new to the team to, to speak to that aspect. Um, I haven't been uh, working on in, in that field of of, um, um, of preprint submission so much as in, on the on the data side. Can I answer this, please? Go for it. Hello. Hi. Yeah, we can. Hear Hello, you. can you hear yes. me? Yes. Okay, cool. Um, actually, we are accepting um, submissions from uh, all African languages. Uh, just that um, we we require the author to translate the the abstract into uh, an English version. So okay, that, I, I think Umari can go on and answer about the multilingualism in uh, in Africa. Kai. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, we, we can hear yes, you. Um, yeah, yeah. We, okay. uh, in, in African archive, we actually accept some Okay, so uh, uh, just to contribute to what uh, Umaru also say, um, we are fostering African language diversity in scholarly communication. Uh, we, we are working on receiving um, submissions in different African languages. And through that, uh, recently we have been receiving um, translations of the summary of, of the abstract as a first step towards um, now accepting and moderating submissions in native uh, languages. So uh, we have a program, uh, author interviews, where we um, send out interviews to authors who submit to Africa Kai platform. And uh, through that, we're able to interact with them in person and also ask them to uh, submit uh, an, uh, an ab abstract or summary of their work in either English, uh, I mean, in, in a native language or in a second language or whichever a language that they prefer uh, in text or audiovisual format. And then afterwards, we um, publish that on PubPub and then we link um, that publication or that, um, that submission that submission to their, uh, to their actual submission on either OSF, Zenodo, um, Sense Open. And then uh, we also, if it's a, if it's a video, we also up upload it to our YouTube so that they can be able to make their research usable by their local communities or even accessible by their communities. Yeah, thank you. Great, thanks. And I think there was a slight delay on sound there, but I think we um, got from, um, 
uh, you'd what um, uh, the, the answer that that was um, was expected so um, thanks very much we are up on time and so I'm going to switch over and just um, wanted to really thank the team from Africa Archive for um, joining us and sharing about what you're doing and please continue the conversation in either the chat or the slack channels and um, looking forward to working with you all um, with that I will switch over to our next presenter um, if you just give me a moment